strategic will be uh, at the end. Alba is a prankster. Um, but uh, basically, what what uh, the the purpose of this uh, of this session is to see if we if we can have a continuity uh, after this conference. Uh, uh, as as we mentioned during the the opening session yesterday, uh, as me and Aldo actually mentioned in the, in the opening session, uh, we uh, we didn't intend for this uh, network where what what we call a network to become a network. It wasn't something that uh, donors uh, decided to to support, and it was driven basically by us. Uh, attending conferences and, and seeing things in common uh, with, uh, with similar organizations. And, uh, and we ended up here, you know, uh, sharing experiences, projects, helping each other. And, um, and this conference in itself uh, wasn't supposed to be this uh, wide. Well, I don't see too many people here, but there are 17 organizations uh, in, in, this, in this conference. Uh, and it was supposed to be only that us and that table over there, actually. Uh, so here we are, uh, a lot of us uh, uh, using ICT tools to, uh, to promote uh, democracy, human rights, uh, accountability, and, uh, and we want to see where, uh, where we can go from, from here on. Uh, we, we, as in uh, our organization, MIAFT, and, and that table over there, four uh, organizations from, from the Balkans, uh, have already established uh, a good rapport, and we we exchange a lot of information. Uh, but we want to see where where this can go, where where the uh, whether the other organizations can collaborate, uh, and to what extent. So this is what we're going to discuss now, and uh, I, I would like your your in input in this because uh, I mean uh, we we can't force it to do anything. We can strategize as much as we want, but. This has to be an effort uh, from all of us. If I may say only one thing, just, just very briefly. Um, this is supposed to be very informal. So what we will try to do during these days is that um, just present what we've been doing through this last year and what are the main projects we've been doing. If, and basically, if you like what you saw in terms of projects and where do you see, if you see any kind of cooperation. You can see drafted uh, just some some bullets how to orient us in this discussion. But as like LCC, I just want to stress it out. Please feel free to comment on any way that you uh, feel more comfortable. And uh, we have Eva taking notes, and we will compile a, a document that we will send around. And maybe it's useful, maybe not. We will see. Um, so where where we are right now? Uh, we've been uh, we've been uh, meeting for the past uh, two years, I think, uh, with, uh, with those organizations over there, and we've been uh, talking about uh, you know sharing experiences, projects, and we've had uh, the Bosnians. The Bosnians are I think uh, Zaštone has have been the most prolific in terms of uh, spreading uh, their uh, their uh, know-how, their their tools. Uh, their lessons learned. Uh, they have helped us. Uh, they have helped uh, Metamorphosis from Macedonia, uh, I think. Um, and um, and there, as as uh, as last I heard, uh, Dark over there was was uh, was training some some Libyans, I think, a, a Libyan organization. Boris and, and Darko were in in Libya, uh, helping uh, and. We think that you think that uh, you're going to have another truthometer, I suppose, right? Yeah. So this is uh, this has been a very uh, very successful collaboration for us. Uh, we we have a truthometer, a voltmeter, and and a fixed by my, my city uh, website. Uh, to a large extent, uh, due to uh, Zaštone helping us and the other organizations also uh, giving us input. Uh, so we. I mean, all of us have, have uh, uh, we've started somewhere, Tsrta over there, the, the Serbian organization has, has started with the trucometers, and now uh, a lot of countries have them, even Kosovo has, has one, although we, we haven't been involved in the same group of uh, people, but it's basically the same idea. 
And, uh, and I don't know whether there are other organizations, I wasn't able to talk to each and one of you, if there are any similar projects uh, in, in, other, in other countries. But we can discuss that uh, a little later, I suppose. So uh, this is where we're at. Uh, we, we've, been, uh, talking, we, we've been talking about this uh, for two years and we have, we have these, uh, these uh, similar projects. Uh, where we want to be, are there any other any organizations from any other country who would be interested in implementing similar projects as in photometer, voltmeter, uh, monitoring of uh, promises, uh, 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 monitoring of policies? Yes? We can discuss that later. Uh, so you would be interested in, in, in working on the uh, I report uh, the, the fixed mass city website uh, in Kosovo. Um, so uh, where we want to be? Are there any other organizations who want to uh, are interested in implementing similar projects? Uh, we will write it down and we will send it uh, later in this uh, joint document if you are interested in it. Or you don't have to decide now. Uh, it's, it's just a, you know, an initial uh, show of interest. Uh, let's, let's put it that way. Oh, Enyo over there is interested. conversation with the president from Moldova and they had a nice project. Uh, they were analyzing the laws that the parliament of Moldova are passing and that they have some specialists in every field to uh, analyze these laws if they will uh, have a chance to permit the officials to be corrupted. So if the parliament passes a law, you, they analyze these laws, if they can uh, 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 let the officials to have possibilities to get corrupted. So if the law, uh, like, you know, it was like I, I got on the idea, but we will contact together to to be to, to get a specific information. Uh, that that is very interesting because uh, Miaf has has a project called I I Vote. Uh, we monitor the Albanian Parliament uh, and we do reports. We we do monitor the laws that are passed in the Albanian Parliament. So it would be interesting to analyze more in depth uh, not only what laws are passed and how they approach the, the electoral promises of the previous electoral campaign, but also uh, how these laws, whether these, these individual laws uh, allow for, for corruption, whether they have, uh, wh whether they have, uh, they allow the opportunity for, for corruption. Uh, that would be interesting. So we will stay in touch. Okay, what are the common uh, challenges? I put like only four points uh, over there, but I would I would like you guys to, to give me give us um, your input in this. Uh, I put access to information, uh, format of information was one issue that came up, uh, intimidation, uh, media coverage or lack of uh, me me media coverage. Uh, what are some other common common challenges that you see that you could uh, see that they are, they are uh, across the board, they are uh, applicable to all of the organizations. Since we come from Eastern Europe, we have, we have some, some uh, similar common background uh, due to our uh, his, uh, recent history. What would be some, some challenges? I think the common kind of challenge is uh, between like, uh, broken NGOs and NGOs in Central Asia. It's a problem in engaging people, civil society, to be aware of problems, to be aware of your projects. Because, I mean, uh, very usually people 
uh, I mean NGOs are specialists in one field like law or uh, other things but they don't really think about like promotion and stuff they don't hire a marketing manager they don't hire like special like technical manager to support their project because like sometimes NGOs have like, 20 websites or something like that so uh, engaging people to come to discuss and stuff like that is really important because modern world provides so much uh, great tools like Facebook, Twitter and stuff like that so to engage people to communicate and be aware of problems because uh, for what basically we are doing all this just to make a website and analyze we want other people to uh, come up to us and uh, join us I mean at least, at least they would join us uh, in their minds. So they support us, understand more, see the picture more clearly. So I think that's uh, why we should, I mean, cooperate, share our experience. For example, here I do know probably every every country has the truth meter. Basically, we are introducing a truth meter, uh, fix my street, and like some violations and stuff. But each project is different. I mean. Each project has own history, own uh, steps, and we could share the steps, not to just waste time by passing the, them by ourselves. So we can learn from our like probably colleagues that know better, uh, and just sharing information to make it less expensive and more, I mean, better to use by engaged people. It's like my vision. Thank you, Alex. Um, that, that is a very interesting point that you're making. Uh, I think, uh, just to add to, to your point, uh, involving people is, is really hard, um, in, in, especially in, in countries where uh, volunteer work uh, or a, a believing in something has been broken uh, through several you know, uh, phases, several uh, break, breakdowns of, of the of the trust, of the public trust, uh, and uh, we, we certainly have to work on that and, and, and uh, share our experiences uh, in, in terms of trust uh, and involve, uh, getting people involved in, in such initiatives. Uh, as far as common goals, mutual uh, common goals, I put uh, Money, we, we're all, I, I suppose we, we, we would agree on, on this. We're all interested in monitoring public institutions, uh, individual uh, and public officials, uh, informing citizens, analyzing, making analysis of, uh, of the data that is monitored, uh, keeping public officials and institution, institutions accountable. So using this data to show them that uh, what you're doing is, is good or, or, or bad, uh, using, uh, using uh, certainly the uh, demo democracy criteria uh, and democracy in general as a, as a, as a, as a bigger you know, idea. Uh, I don't know if you can add anything to, to these goals uh, from what you, you were able to gather during the, the conference. What are some, some other goals uh, that, uh, that are common to all of the organizations that were present here. I don't know, uh, maybe uh, as far as I know, uh, monitoring process is more an activity than yeah. uh, it is uh, a purpose or a goal. So, uh, uh, I would suggest rather to increase the level of transparency of public uh, institutions because we do mon uh, the monitoring process in order to increase the level of uh, transparency uh, in the public, public institutions. Okay, now I'm quiet. <laughs> Uh, okay, to, to dig a little a little deeper into into what you were saying, uh, transparency. Transparency is is very important, but it's uh, it's not a, a, an end in itself. 
right? You don't do transparency for the sake of uh, transparency. And I'm saying this uh, because I, I read an, a very interesting article from a, a, a regional, uh, uh, a, a, an expert on, on the region of the Balkans and Eastern Europe uh, called Ivan Krastev. I don't know if you guys know Ivan Krastev. He's, uh, he's a Bulgarian uh, expert. Uh, and he has a think tank that, that uh, deals with these issues, transparency, whether it's important, where, where does it take you? And uh, he was he was giving an, an, a very interesting example about uh, transparency, not necessarily meaning democracy. Uh, you know that in Russia there is a there is a lot of uh, talk about democracy, uh, transparency. Sometimes is is uh, they put uh, an equal uh, transparency equals democracy, but it doesn't necessarily. It's not necessarily the case. Uh, in, in, in the case of Russia, there was a lot of, uh, there was the elections and a lot of people were saying that there will be, there will be, uh, there will be fraud, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and uh, the regime there, uh, the semi-autocratic or autocratic regime, whatever you want to call it, uh, decided to, uh, to put transparency in, in as, as the keyword to the elections. So they put cameras everywhere in every polling station. And uh, and fair enough, that was transparent in the eyes in the eyes of uh, all of the or, uh, international organizations, OSCE, uh, EU monitors, etc. Uh, observers from all over the world said, "This is transparency." So the elections are free and fair. Well, not really, in, not in Russia, uh, because because having cameras uh, spying on you while you're you're going to the voting to the polling station uh, means that. <laughs> The big brother is watching you. So many people, most people, were reported uh, being afraid to, to to really vote uh, what they what they wanted to vote because they were being watched. Uh, so transparency in some cases doesn't necessarily mean democracy. So we we should stress, I think, that it's transparency for the sake of democracy, not transparency equals democracy. An activity than uh, they are like goals or purposes or uh, what else. And also the monitoring. We do not do monitoring just for the sake of monitoring, but we do the monitoring to increase or to keep high public officials more accountable and transparent. But I wasn't. Uh, no, no, I wasn't saying. I yeah, correlating in the transparency uh, because it had so much. Uh, variables, uh, democracy, and uh, but it sounds more like uh, activity. For example, when we gather data, we just analyze. It's not our goal to analyze data, but it's more an activity for uh, for increasing. Uh, I, uh, I get I get your point. Uh, you're saying that it's uh, as a concept. It's a it's a it's not a goal. It's a, it's an activity in itself. But I was uh, I was uh, taking transparency as a as a as a yes. uh, any other uh, anything else to, to add to common goals that we, we have we're uh, again we're we're writing all of this down and we're going to uh, produce a document that will be sent uh, to all of you. I, I might <coughs> repeat myself from the presentation today, but. Uh, I think it's also like changing the political culture is, is, is basically something that, at least for us, would be was, was one of the first goals that we, that we, why we started the whole thing. Because we were initially never a, a research or monitoring organization, we were more of an advocacy group in, in, in any case. And, and accountability goes with, with advocacy also. So like, you know, in the end we, we started it because we, we thought that it would change political culture and would, ease, would make the path to, to actually some changes much easier than, than, than without having the monitoring that we do. So that was our goal. Also on top of, on top of many of these, I'm not sure that, that we, we, we accepted all these from the start. We, we, some of them were, came in as a, as, a, as a side effect during the, the monitoring that we did. So like, that, that would be my, my, my comment to this. OK, 
Okay, um, these are some of the things that we have done or discussed with, with that group over there. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, uh, I would like your, your input in, in each and one of the, of the points. Uh, I know that a lot of you uh, work on, on ICT uh, tools, uh, projects that have to do with uh, that use ICT tools. Uh, so uh, we have found that uh, supporting each other uh, online and offline, whenever we are at the conference mentioning uh, each other or, uh, or sharing, simple, simple act of sharing uh, on, on Facebook, uh, something that uh, a friend from or a partner organization is, uh, is posting uh, really helps you know spread the word and and uh, this has to do more with uh, with uh, in, in our case at least uh, supporting us and giving us uh, credibility uh, in our own country you know when you have a large network of organizations that are are helping you are they're, they're like uh, uh, part of your uh, support uh, system and uh, and that gives you credibility uh, locally in, in your local po politics. Uh, we have we know that because we have uh, we have been well today is our tenth anniversary and we've been attacked so many times. Uh, I cannot count the times that we've been uh, slandered, uh, sent to court. Uh, our activists have been uh, jailed several times. Uh, so we, we've had many many problems with the authorities. Um, it probably has to do with Darko was saying earlier. Uh, the culture, the culture of politics. They see. Uh, I heard this. Uh, I think yesterday that uh, politicians see us as a threat. They don't see us as uh, as uh, as collaborators, as uh, as partners. You know, in improving the the, the, the political culture in general. Uh, so we we've done that. We've done uh, online and offline mutual support. We've shared information, uh, and we want to discuss whether we can do more. Uh, such as common reports, uh, since since there are uh, so many similar projects uh, or projects that do more or less the same, uh, with with uh, with that table over there again, we've discussed uh, doing common reports uh, in English, maybe uh, having uh, showing uh, what, what the regional what the regional trend of things is uh, in in terms of uh, politicians being kept uh, accountable. Uh, yesterday it was very interesting to see how Open Data uh, Albania, an, uh, an Albanian organization, was was showing how you can compare data uh, across the region. You can use uh, you can use uh, graphics uh, integrated in, in a website where you can compare two countries, uh, three, four, or much many more countries in terms of uh, what. Uh, what's going on in terms of um, statistics. Uh, and why not do that uh, with, our, with our projects, no? Uh, we, we do truthometer, you do truthometer. We have learned from, from, uh, from the Bosnian organization Zastone, uh, and we're using similar criteria. Maybe it's time to talk about uh, methodology, criteria. If we use the same criteria, if we have a very strict uh, methodology, we can compare uh, these these data. I don't know uh, if if any of you has has uh... actually we've been giving that a thought like for, for 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 some time now, and I think that at least on the on the on the reporting side, if we but not all, all of us are actually doing the the reporting on the pre-election promises, it, it shouldn't be that hard to make make some sort of a common reporting or even like, as you said, some, some sort of a platform where you could actually, let's say, cross-check the, 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 the accountability of government based on the, on the promises. And we we would very gladly go into such a, such a development. And then, you know, then if, if, we, if we develop such a platform once and if the methodology is at least like, you know, somewhere there, Together and, and we, we can actually, like, you know, then just just input any other country that ever has would have similar research into, into such a such a platform. So, like, you know, we, we would love to actually develop some some sort of a thing where you could actually compare the the, the, the accountability of government based on election policies. And, and you know, like, why not? You know, there's there's 
I, I'm seeing their next conference as a question mark for like, you know, why not having something as a, as some of that as a, as a why not having some of that as a, as, as a topic for one of the next times we meet up. So like, you know, yeah, we, 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 we would love to do that. I mean, for the start, let's have a common, whatever, like the, 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 a common place where, where actually everybody can, can take them to different to the meters and, and have some, some words about it and then develop from that, you know, like some sort of a common Maybe reporting. A, a small presentation in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A joint, I mean, a, a joint website where, where, where at, least, at least with like linking to our site would be a good start for that. And then like, you know, maybe in, in, in new future we could, we could think of, a, we could actually think of something that, that, that can also put the report in one place. We started talking about that in Belgrade maybe uh, a year and a half ago, something like that. Um, if you were wondering why I was laughing at uh, Why Not, Why Not is the translation of uh, Zash Monet, uh, their organization. Um, anybody wants to add to, to this point? Yes. Just something small. I, I know there's a group of uh, parliamentary monitoring sites that have, are working together to set a standard for uh, parliamentary openings, where they, they made a big list of criteria, like a statement of this is our expectation. And after they've set that standard, now they're, they're working to have each region go and evaluate their parliament according to that standard, and then then build like a ranking, like a, 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 a comparative analysis between parliaments. I, I don't remember the name, I, I can give it to you after, but, but it was interesting. I, I think it's valuable because they set a metric, rather than just comparing one to the other. First they set the standard and then they compare everyone to the standard. And I, I thought it was a, it could maybe be applied in this, in this case also. Thank you. Dear. I know, I mean, I, I, we actually have touched on this before, but I think it's important. There was a conference in DC like last year that where actually it was agreed on, I mean, like the, the, whole, the whole package and the, and the declaration and actually, uh, I mean, there is a metric I mean, it's, at least there, there are things to measure. We're not clear on the metrics yet, but the good thing is that actually now we'll be starting working on, on, on some sort of parliament transparency uh, research that's going to happen in, I think, six or seven countries in Europe. That we just like, you know, we're gonna start in a month or two. So like, that would be the first development of that metric into something tangible in terms of results. So we'll see, like, I'm not, I'm not sure, but actually that would be the first research done outside after the, the, the whole declaration has been adopted and everything. So I guess it's, let's see how it runs and maybe we can move the whole region into that. Thank you. And then I wanted to talk about funding. Uh, we will share no, funding. Uh, we, we would like to, uh, we want to share where, where we got our funding uh, because I mean, this is very, uh, very, it might be very interesting for the other organizations if they want to adopt a similar uh, project. Probably they need to know where, where, where the dough is, where, where the money to fund all of these projects uh, is coming from. So in our case, we we got funding from uh, from the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, which is, I suppose, uh, also supporting. Uh, Zashtone and Sirta and Metamorphosis. Uh, they are very interested in, in this kind of project. Uh, this conference is, is, uh, is funded by, by, by Soros, so Soros Albania, uh, in collaboration with uh, the Soros Foundations in, in your countries. So Soros is also very interested in, in this, kind of, uh, this kind of project. Um, then the US Embassy is also um, supporting uh, one one of the, the three websites, the <coughs> I report, the Fix My City uh, website. Uh, so they're also interested in this kind of uh, of, of uh, projects. Uh, I don't know if you want to add uh, which uh, which other uh, funders are interested in in funding these these kinds of projects. Is there anybody else? Just please. Yeah, in Pivisan we 
work with UNDP, United Nations Development Program. They support Fix My Street. Uh, they support uh, election process violations. Uh, and as well as SORUS and NAD and America and this. Thank you. We will add these to the documents so that you know uh, you, you have them um, for your reference. So I asked before, but I guess you don't have to answer now. Where will the next two commenters voting this be adopted? In which other country? Is there anybody interested in, in, in that? We can continue this, this conversation later when you go back home and you discuss with your organizations. But uh, we, uh, as uh, you... Who is, no, sorry. <laughs> who is not having... I mean, who's not, yeah. who is not implementing truthometer or vote meter in their countries? Uh, so that we would know. <laughs> In Kosovo, do they have it? Yes, you were in the second. Yeah. Oh, it's so it, yeah. And you are still doing it? In Ukraine, don't have it. Mm -hmm. We are still doing it, but we are trying to adopt. Modernize. Yeah, Ukraine doesn't have it. Yeah, anybody else does it in Ukraine? No. no? Not really. Actually, yeah, they do. Kind of, sort of, but that was, they don't do regular stuff. Yeah, there is a Ukraine truth meter, it's Vlad meter, so yeah. not UK, uh, not UK, whatever, Ukraine. So basically, probably every country now has this kind of thing because parliamentarian and politicians need to be correct. Uh, yeah, we have it and it's pretty successful. I mean, two years already, so. How about know. Armenia? In Armenia? In Kyrgyzstan? Do you guys have it in Armenia? Yes. Nobody else? In Georgia? No. In Moldova? Basically, we are from Kyrgyzstan, and we are the only country in Central Asia that had this kind of project. So probably after getting back, we'll try to adopt these things and offer to uh, Kazakhstan Soros to offer some NGOs to I mean, adopt this kind of thing. Because in Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and uh, Kazakhstan could adopt it. I mean, we had this similar pro problem also in these countries, and these like, projects could be very viable. And I suppose now Turkmenistan, because it's like a yeah, it's black dot. <laughs> in the map, you're not allowed to go there. Um, and then keeping in touch, uh, last, lastly keeping in touch, we, oh yes, sorry. Basically, like, we're talking about in a really nice and optimistic way with the facade group that there's organizations here that come with an initiative and with an idea and a, Gen, uh, genuine will to work on this, but um, I, I don't know if if this has been done by you guys, any of you guys, please feel free to interrupt me and say you're late. We've already done that, but uh, drawing from an experience we've had, that is, we have we work in a in network with several organizations from Balkan countries called the Anti Corruption Student Network in Southeast Europe. And what we do is we, um, we develop methodologies and implement research on perception of corruption in higher education for years. Uh, what, what we did last year was we co-authored a book from, of a publication uh, from uh, organizations from, eight from five countries that have been working on the, which have been working on methodology. Uh, it's called the First Aid Kit uh, Know-How Guide to Student Research. And the idea was to simplify and explain how to develop methodology to research corruption on a higher education institution by using questionnaires, free access to information, interviews, and focus groups. So it's like a simple thing which you wouldn't need a training for, and in 100 pages, you get um, four countries uh, an expert's opinion on how to do the simplest way to develop this methodology and uh, 
uh, actual examples from questionnaires or FOIA claims and whatnot. Um, and what we're doing afterwards, uh, and thinking about doing uh, a little further, is have calls for student researchers that have seen this publication, are interested in this, and really want to implement it. So if we have several countries which have the neutrophometer, the votometer, the vote meter, and whatnot, um, my, my curiosity here is, uh, if, if there is one, I'm sorry, but I don't know if there is such a thing as a publication or a case study, which is build your own neutrometer, build votometer, how do you do it? From a technical way, from a methodological way, from, uh, you know, what are the challenges, what are the obstacles, what are the dangers when you start doing something like this? Because there's experts from different countries which have had dif different experiences and work in different political settings, and it could be a very versatile uh, guide on how to do it, and a very well-structured guide. And additionally, uh, talking about it next conference, it raises the question, so what if something like this is done? What if a publication like this is done, and widely disseminated? Which should be easy, <coughs> having OSF, NED, UNDP, TI, and a lot of other actors in the play that have quite a big outreach. Along still had a call for interested NGOs from the various countries which would like to learn more in the next conference could entail a very structured know-how training uh, and preparing other organizations that are capable of implementing something like that in their home countries. Sir. Thank you so much, Donna. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, I mean, that was, uh, that was what Darko started uh, talking about, and then uh, I guess uh, Donna added a little more to, to, to this idea that uh, we, we, could, we could work on, on common criteria, common, um, well, uh, An added argument for, I guess, I mean, what I'm thinking is that we can have, if we achieve to have some uh, common criteria for uh, for everybody, uh, then it means that we can also have like a rank of governments and how they are behaving according to the criteria of of truth meter, which is we basically setting up a criteria of government itself. If I'm clear on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, yeah, on the, maybe on the next meeting, uh, maybe this should be a very strong point to uh, to find out if this is possible to have the uh, the same criteria everywhere. So, yeah. And we can start the conversation online uh, before that. No? I, can, I can add to that. I think that actually we do have like most of the material to do something like that because yeah. we've done it like so far uh, I think in four or five countries and, and for Albania <coughs> now for, for, for Libya we had to translate a lot of our material into English so we pretty much like have I don't know like 30 40 pages of instructions on how to do it how to set up the methodology how to, I mean it needs to be edited it needs to be worked on it it should in order to, to, to do something like, like you suggested but we have material that actually, you know, like it can easily, like with not too much work, can actually be transformed into, into some sort of a, let's say, do-it-yourself kind of a type of publication. If you, I, I think you're referring to something like that. Basically, I mean, it, anyway, it would be hard to, to do it yourself in a way, but like you know, that that kind of publication would definitely help doing it. And, and I think we can we can do it pretty easily without a problem you know. so like I, I think that, that, that that's a very good idea that's a very good idea and i think we should we, we will do we will do it some point for sure uh, sorry to jump in just to just to occupy the time just to jump in i'll be you're the one on the projector what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just go to yes what if you can yes. um yes. more than okay um the the, the way we did it, like, I know you guys have a lot of the materials, and to have them there in public would be a really, really uh, encouraging thing to do. Is that Wolf, that okay? okay? Yeah, sorry, there's not going to be an English version here, but if you go to uh, the third tab, I think, you'll see the know-how. And the way it's done is one, two, three, fourth tab. Fourth? 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 Yeah. Click. Um, yeah? 
and just find the red book with an English title. There we go, first aid kit. The way it, we did it is like we never even met. We wrote different parts. The methodology general overview was written in Moldova. We access information was written in Macedonia. Uh, and the way it's written is like how you should take up this thing and do it. So you can look over the structure because it says these are the steps and this is how you how you um, start doing things. And then, I mean, you can backtrack a little bit further and go from the technical overview to the content overview to the case studies and you have great examples that could be inserted. And once that something like that is ready, first it's accessible to everyone that's interested. And second, if we're talking about a follow-up event, it could be far more structured and have an actual training and our capacity building on how to implement something like this to organizations that are interested. Um, I've had, um, in, uh, in several occasions, I've presented uh, these projects, like what's happening in, in Europe, in Southeast Asia particularly. Uh, and I, I can definitely say that there would be a lot of interest for something like this, particularly in uh, Latin America and uh, Africa. Thank you again, Donna. Darko? All right. Um, I mean, we don't have anything else to add. We only have to cover three three points um, before we let you go. Um, at six o'clock, uh, at uh, if you if you have your brochures with you, if you can check on on the back of the brochure, uh, there is a map, and uh, there is a place called Remix the Space. Uh, it's walking distance, one kilometer from here. Uh, you are all invited to, to participate. This is, uh, as we said yesterday, uh, this is a big deal to us. It's uh, it's uh, Nyan's 10th uh, anniversary. Uh, we will have a, a reception, um, and uh, some of our found founders and, and historical uh, supporters will be there. Uh, so we are more, more than invited uh, to, to, to be there and celebrate with us. Uh, it's not uh, one thing that we should clarify before that. It's not going to be uh, like a party booming and da, 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 because 15 of March it also coincides with uh, with uh, with the greatest explosion. It's a, like a tragedy that happened uh, five years five years no, five, six, five, 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 five years ago. And because of that, and in respect of that, we are not doing like you know fireworks and stuff but it's a uh, but it's, uh friends of me out coming all together and having a having a, a, a glass of wine or something so we're not going to do a harlem shake after uh if you were wondering we're not uh, five years ago uh a huge explosion i don't know if you know if you know this a huge explosion happened uh 20 25 kilometers uh, outside of Tirana. Even closer. We all felt it. Uh, 26 people died, and uh, we, we felt the the, the, the shake, uh, the, the buildings were shaking in all the way to Macedonia. So uh, we we've been we've been fighting against uh, the current government uh, for not uh, putting the, the responsible people on trial. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, there's no justice uh, uh, related to, to that uh, to that tragedy. So, uh, in respect of that, we're not going to have a, a Harlem Shake. We decided that it's not going to happen. Uh, but you are more than welcome. It's not going to be a uh, it's, it's going to be a fun ceremony, just not over the board fun. Um, Tomorrow's tour, uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, a, a lot of you will be will all be already gone. The Georgians are, are leaving really, really early. Uh, and then the Serbians, I, I, I believe, leave at, at, your flight is at 12, uh, something like that. Um, you're also leaving in the morning? Yes. So uh, just to coordinate uh, your, your, uh, your trips from your hotels, to uh, to the airport, you're going to go to that table and talk to Enio and uh, and Tony over there. Uh, they will tell you what's going to happen, who's going to pick you up, when. Okay.
uh, all of you who are flying. And uh, basically, uh, those of you who are not leaving uh, too early uh, at 10 uh, at 10 a.m. at the lobby of the hotel here, uh, Enio again over there is going to wait for you uh, if it's not raining again uh, to take you on a tour around Tirana to to show you some of the landmark buildings, landmark uh, in, uh, uh, you know uh, things to see in Tirana for a couple of hours. And with that, I will, I will close this session. We will complete a document. We took notes from what we discussed, and we will send it around. So I guess you have some free time to, uh, to have a free walk around here and to take a look at the city by, by yourself. And uh, we'll see at, uh, at 6. At 6 at the ceremony. Remix the space. You you will have it on your, on your brochure. Art Academy. Just even if you get lost, just ask for the Art Academy, and that's where the place is. So uh, we only have one Art Academy, so <laughs> you can't miss it. Um, yeah. Anything else? And yeah. And for those of you who want to uh, party them in the after, uh, in, during, uh, later on <laughs> in the evening. We'll let you know. We can catch up at the ceremony first, and then we'll let you know what what the plans are. Thank you.